Wiggle is probably the expression that I've used the most in After Effects, and along the way I've picked up a few tips on how to use it more effectively that I think can be really helpful. But before I get to those, let me make sure to cover the basics in case you haven't used Wiggle before. And don't worry, if you already know all about Wiggle and just want to get straight to the tips, feel free to scrub forward to the section you're after. Boiling it down, the wiggle expression is basically just a way to have After Effects randomly move a value up and down from its starting place. Might sound pretty boring and not too useful, but it's actually really cool. You control it by telling it as little as two things. How many times you want it to wiggle per second, we call that the frequency, and how much you want it to wiggle when it does, which is called the amount. With that info plugged into the wiggle expression, we can get a huge variety of stuff done without creating a single keyframe. Want to add some fake camera shake to some footage? Boom, wiggle expression. Want to liven up a lens flare by adding some subtle flickering? Boom, wiggle expression. Want to spice up a motion graphics background by having some blobs randomly move around? Boom, wiggle expression. Hopefully now you're at least a bit curious about it, so let me actually show you how to use it. In After Effects, you can apply expressions to any property that you can animate. So first of all, I'll select the circle and hit P to bring up the position. Then holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and clicking the stopwatch, we open the expression box. I'll type in wiggle and then open and close some brackets. I'll say wiggle one time per second and when it does wiggle, I want it to wiggle 100 pixels. Now if I click out and hit play on the timeline, we've got a wiggle. If instead I wanted to change it to wiggle 200 pixels 0.5 times per second, we can easily do that too. Now to really quickly show you a more practical example before we head over to the tips, let's try creating a fake camera shake. Here we've got a photo that I've animated in my previous video. And by the way, if you missed it and want to see my process for animating photos, click that eye in the top right. Anyways, one thing that I think can help make this look even better is introducing some subtle camera shake. To do that, we'll just need to apply a wiggle to the position as well as the rotation. So with the layer selected, I'll hit P, then holding Shift, hit R as well. And once again, holding Alt or Option on a Mac, hit the stopwatch to bring up the expression box. For this one, I'll say wiggle 0.6 times per second and move 10 pixels when you do. Now playing that back, it already looks pretty good and more lively than it did before, and a lot of people might just stop here when adding camera shake, but usually I find that adding a small amount of rotational wiggle really steps it up. And when I say small amount, I really mean it. You have to go extremely subtle with the rotation wiggle or you're going to make people motion sick. So I'll tell it to wiggle 0.5 times per second, but only wiggle by 0.2%. You can experiment yourself and find a number that works best for your project, but this is what it looks like if I even raise it as high as 1% rotation. Gross. But anyways, you get the point. That's how you create a basic camera shake using Wiggle. And hopefully now that you've seen a more practical example of it, you have a better understanding of the expression and how great it is. Now that we get how it works, let's jump into some tips to get the most out of your Wiggles. For a long time, I thought of Wiggle as a set it up once and you're locked in type thing, because you can't exactly animate expressions. But I was wrong. You can actually keyframe properties and expressions, but it's just not exactly obvious how to do it. By setting it up so that we can keyframe the frequency and amount of our wiggle, we get to control the chaos a little bit. Now the secret is to use sliders. Not those sliders, these sliders. Let me show you what I mean using this circle. With it selected, I'll add a new slider to it by going to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Controls. Then I'll make a copy of it with Control D, Command D if you're on a Mac. Next I'll rename them to stay organized by selecting one and hitting Enter. I'll call the first Frequency and the second Amount. Then I'll hit P and create the wiggle expression for the circle's position. But instead of typing in our own frequency value, I'll grab the pick whip over here and drag it over to our frequency slider's value. Then I'll add a comma to the expression and again drag the pick whip over to the amount slider's value. Finally, I'll close the brackets and here we've got it. A wiggle whose frequency and amount are tied to these sliders, which can be keyframed. So down here at the start, I'll set the frequency to three wiggles per second and the amount to zero. Then moving forward, I'll raise the frequency to 5 wiggles per second and set the amount to 500. And now we've got a wiggle that ramps up over time. So using sliders is a great tip to animate properties of a wiggle and other expressions too, to get a little bit more control out of them. My next tip is for the times you want to wiggle only one axis of a property. For example, making this circle only wiggle up and down on the Y axis. To work our way up to this solution, it's important to know that we can directly set the x and y value of a property from the expression box, just by entering it inside of some square brackets. But the problem with this is that these numbers are set in stone. Changing the values from here or even setting keyframes won't make a difference because we're telling After Effects that we always want the property to have this exact value. Well luckily for us, After Effects has a way for us to reference the property value that we choose over here. So by typing only value into the expression box below, we're telling the property that we want it to always be value which is this. And now for the last piece of the puzzle, we can tell a value if we only want to reference the x or y from it by using square brackets after we write value. 
So since we're going to be setting the x and y of this property directly, we'll open some square brackets. Then for the x value, I want it to be the exact same x value that we set over here. So I'll write value, open square brackets, 0, and then close square brackets. Now we wrote 0 to tell value to use the first dimension it has, because generally while coding, you start counting from 0. So putting in 0 would be the first dimension, which is x, then 1 would be the second dimension, which is y, and if this layer was 3D and had a z-axis, we'd write 2 to reference that. So now that we have the x-axis singled out, we'll add a comma, and then here's where we can put our wiggle. The wiggle is also going to have an x and y because it's being applied to the position property. So after we write our wiggle, we'll tell it that we only want to use its y value. Then close the final square brackets, and there we have it, a wiggle that's only being applied to the y-axis. If you're a bit new to After Effects expressions or just coding in general, I get how that might be a bit much to take in, but it's actually really useful to know this stuff. We can use pretty much the same thing we just went over to make wiggling a scale property actually useful. Since scale has two dimensions just like the position does, when we apply a wiggle to it, it's wiggling both dimensions separately, which is probably not what you'd want. What we need to do to fix that is use the same dimension of our wiggle for both the scale's x and y value. To make that even easier, we'll set our wiggle's x value to a variable. To do that, we'll give our variable a name, then add an equal sign followed by the wiggle. Then I'll add square brackets and tell it I want the wiggle's x value specifically and end the line with a semicolon. Now the expression knows that when we type wig, we actually mean the x value of this wiggle. So the last step now is to set our scale's x and y dimension. Opening square brackets, the x value is going to be the wiggle's x value, which is wig, and the y value is also going to be the wiggle's x value, which is wig. And now when we click off, we've got a scale that wiggles with the same x and y dimensions. In other words, a scale wiggle that's actually useful. My last tip for this video is how to smooth out your wiggle. Sometimes if you're wiggling a property, like the position for example, you're happy with the frequency and amount, but there's still times when it feels a little bit jarring. Well, we can fix that using the smooth expression. The first thing we need to do though is convert the wiggle expression to keyframes. So right click the property that you're wiggling, choose keyframe assistant, and then convert expression to keyframes. From here we'll just alt click on the stopwatch again, and now we'll enter in a smooth expression. Now that's just a rough starting point for our smoothing. To figure out what we want to change these values to, let's open the graph editor and take a look. Here we can see the original wiggle as keyframes, but with this graph icon toggled on, we should also see a line, which represents what our motion looks like after our smooth expression. The two main values we control for smooth are the width and the samples. The width is the range of time that we want to take averages from when trying to smooth our value out, and the samples are the amount of values we take inside of that range. So if I change this to a width of 1 second with 5 samples, then every single second the expression will calculate the average using 5 sample points. Usually what I do is look at the keyframe values and judge what the smallest time range is that has motion I'd want smoothed out. It looks like for this one, every half second or so, there's a pretty significant value change. So we'll set the width to 0.5 seconds. And for the samples, it's always important to have them set to an odd number. Since the samples are spaced out evenly within the time range, if you choose an odd number, the first and last sample will always be the beginning and end of your range. So I suggest starting from three samples and then working your way up every odd number until you find something you like. Once you find a sample count that works for you, you're good to go. Now you've got some nice wiggled motion with a little less of that jitter. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video. If you learned a thing today, why not like and subscribe to a thing too? Specifically, this video and my channel.